Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of what is in our stand today. And that's a hashtag you can follow, hashtag what is in our stand today. Now I use that same hashtag across all my social media. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube now. And uh, if you look in the description below, you'll see links to all of that um, in my social media. And you'll also see my Strava profile and a bio if you're interested in reading that. But today we're going to talk about installing cleats, demystifying some of the uh, things that are out there, debunking some of that. Uh, urban legends and old wives tales that are out there and I want to simplify that for you because it really is quite simple now this is the uh, pair of shoes that my my uh, cameraman has brought to me so we can install some cleats and I've laid out some things here this is the cleat and screws that we're gonna put on there so it's a three bolt pattern, three bolts, three washers. Then in this case, it's a four millimeter head on the bolt. I have a Sharpie here, and then I just have my pointer. And then I have a plumb bob and a cleat that I want to show you something that I think is quite ingenious, but not, a, not any, I haven't seen any other company that creates cleats do it this way. All right, so first things first, when we're trying to install cleats, one of the things I want you to notice about this particular shoe is that it has a floating anchor nut system. So this might be important for someone who needs to get a certain position of their cleat relative to the pedal spindle. So this might be very important. Um, or it could also be a bike fitters um, option to be able to place their their cleat in the proper place now um, in most cases you won't see this sliding type system so let me show you a different shoe now this is most common you just have the three bolt holes you have a scale here and here this will help you align it so that it's straight and this will align it forward and and aft so this is most common just three bolts with no floating uh, nature to the anchor nut but while we're talking about shoes and cleat placement and things like that I wanted to just briefly talk about one thing and that is you can take a great fitting shoe and turn it exceptional by putting an insole in it that is designed for your your body um, so one of the things that we do here is like let's say for example I'll have a fitting customer or client stand on these and this is a basically creates a heat transfer and these are the different types of arches in someone if they're flat footed or high arch, low arch, that kind of thing. And I believe that my customer is flat footed. So we may benefit from doing this process in addition to looking at the cleat placement. But when you, anytime I sell a pair of shoes, I always talk to someone about, let's take out those basic and very standard insoles out of that shoe and let's make your shoe a much better performing shoe. So we take a heat transfer, we find out what arch support they are or what arch support they need. And then we use this to then decide, okay, are they knock kneed, uh, I'm sorry, bow legged, straight or knock kneed. And you're able to say, okay, we have a very high arch and we have a bow-legged person so an a1 person would benefit from the blue insole this is a yellow one so we're just using this as an example but they have the three different colors there 
And so that arch support would be different based on where your arch and how what type of knee setup you have. And then you just choose the correct insole for that. But the other reason why I wanted to use this is because when you place your cleat, the window in where in which you want to place your cleat is like right here where you know sometimes you'll hear it called a bunion bone and then there's a, a small window of the fourth metatarsal so you have basically from here to here if this was a human foot it would be a, a range of about that much so let's put this away for now let's put this away for now and the insoles and let's focus back on the job at hand the other thing about the pedal spindle is that for many years if you've been around a while you've probably seen this from your bike fitter and this is a plumb bob and so they would put this on your knee they drop this down and based on where your knee was they would want to have knee over pedal spindle or cops and that pedal spindle should be right in, along that bone thing that we were just talking about well i've been fitting for a long time and honestly i don't use this anymore or i haven't used it in a long time i've been doing bike fit since 2004 it doesn't make me an expert but it makes me fairly experienced and I've never seen a reason to use this. The challenge I give someone is I say, you tell me where you're going to sit for the next six hours and I'll place your saddle there. Basically, when I move a saddle back and forth, it's to create power transfer and I want the, the fitting person to tell me based on where they are, either in front of the bottom bracket for time trialing and, and triathlons or behind the bottom bracket for road cycling. There's a place where they know they are efficient, they are comfortable, and they are powerful. All right, so that's where this plumb bob situation is from. Now, the one thing I wanted to show you is just a little tip. If you already have cleats on your shoes, before you remove your shoes, I recommend that you take a gray sharpie or whatever color your um, in your the sole of your shoe is and then just trace an outline of your cleat that way you're not making a mistake by removing your cleat and then oh my goodness where was my cleat oh I spent all that money at a bike fit and I don't know where it's supposed to go back so trace an outline put the cleat back on all is good but here's another way that I've seen it done. Now this cleat comes apart. So if you are replacing your cleats, you can replace a portion of it first while the other portion is still there and you're not going to put your cleat in a different place. You're gonna put it right in the same place. Okay, so let's move on from that. Now let's do a cleat installation now one of the things that i always do when i install pedal cleats is i always put a tiny bit of grease on the threads and the reason i do this is i don't know if these cleats are going to be on here for six months or six years so it's best to put just a tiny bit of grease on the threads and now you can also tighten them with confidence because that grease will help it'll be an element barrier and it'll keep this from rusting and seizing on there I can't tell you how many times over the years we've had to buy a new pair of shoes for someone because either the head of this bolt has stripped out or the anchor nut that is inside the shoe underneath the carbon fiber um, has stripped and we can't replace it we can't do anything with it So now we're down to our last one.
and just a little bit of grease on this last one. And it doesn't take much, just a little bit. Put that on there. And if you have, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know I I grease everything. Okay. So now let's talk about cleat placement again because this is one of those situations where there's tons of videos online and you're going to see a lot of stuff. Personally, in all the years I've been fitting, all I've ever done with these cleats is slide them all the way back and then centered them. And you can use your front bolt to see if you've centered that cleat. And that's pretty darn close, even though we're just shooting a video, right? We're gonna pay a lot more attention to this once we're off screen, but in most cases, sliding the cleat all the way back, you can see the, the slots here, and centering it is going to be perfect for just about everyone. There are exceptions, just like there are exceptions to everything. But generally speaking, just slide the cleats all the way back, center them, and you're done. It's super simple process, not a lot of thinking that goes into it. But remember, this has a set of floating anchor nuts and the other shoe I showed you had a fixed location, just the hole for the anchor nut. So your mileage may vary as they say, and it may depend on what type of shoe you have, generally speaking, all the way back. And so we've debunked a couple of things, the whole knee over pedal spindle, uh, where the cleat placement should be. Um, you know, you want your knee to track straight. That's the most important thing. So you don't want your, when you put on the cleat, you don't want your shoe, if you're riding down the road this way, you don't want your shoe that way or that way. Um, this is a look style cleat. The red gives you nine degrees of float. So you will have some float as you're riding down the road. Personally, I ride fixed cleats, not a fan of any float at all, but everyone will choose what is best for them and what they feel the most comfortable with. Okay, if you have some questions or comments, um, I'd like to know how you place your cleats and what was your experience when, let's just say, you didn't put the cleats in the right place. And I'd like to hear if you um, have had some issues in the past. So just leave a comment below. And um, for the time being, look forward to seeing you on the next video. We'll see you up the road.